all the matter around us is made up of elements. And the smallest unit of an element is an atom. So all the matter around us is made up of atoms bonded together to make molecules and compounds. And these atoms are of this set of 118 elements, actually less than that normally. So we have um, 90 natural elements. Then we've added on to that made elements. And now we're standing at 118 elements. We like to give or represent these elements in this periodic table. So in each box, which represent a unique element. So um, right here, this is iron. We have, uh, this is a minimalist uh, periodic table. So this is typically what we give at least, and um, we can give more. And this one is a little bit more minimalist because uh, it doesn't give all the names of elements. So we have the symbol for the element. Um, so in this case, Fe is a symbol for iron. In this particular one, uh, the name is not present. The other elements, we see that the name is present. This is the periodic table I tend to give on tests. So the common elements, we're expected to learn the names of them. Each element is identified by a um, integer number. So we go from one through 118, each number represents a unique element. And that number is called the atomic number and it represents the number of protons in the nucleus of that atom. The decimal number is the atomic mass of the element. And the elements are made up of different types of atoms based on having different number of neutrons. They're called isotopes, the different atoms. And the mass here is the um, weighted average of the isotopes. So that uh, when we go out and collect some from a, a source on the planet, we should find a mass that is very close to what we have here. This is a, a planetary average of all the isotopes that we have uh, for the element. So the natural elements went up through number 92, uranium. Uh, there was two missing, uh, 61 promethium and 43 technetium. These do not occur, exist on this planet until we enter the nuclear age. Hmm. This is a little bit of structure on this. We'll point out some of the reason for the structure in a little bit. Uh, just to point out that uh, I give some rules that would be useful in chapter three. So I built you rules. Um, and it's the key up here, uh, the name, atomic number, symbol, and the atomic mass. And the symbol is usually uh, one or two letters. Uh, these three letter ones have been replaced with official two letter ones. I haven't uh, updated these. These are the three most recent elements that we've added. So the elements, we broadly categorize them on physical properties as either metal or non-metal uh, with a couple in between as uh, metalloids or semi-metals. And I know this is not very readable here. Apologize for that. Find the original file. So most of our elements are metals. So the blue here are the metals. So most of our elements are metals. Uh, the two of the newest ones we leave have left unclassified, at least when this image was made. Um, and one of the properties, defining properties of metals is a, based on the electronic structure, which allows it to be electrically conducting. So all metals are electrically conducting. They'll conduct electricity easily. The yellows are the non-metals. The non-metals have a wider variety of properties. Uh, in general, they do not conduct electricity. 
like the metals do. Uh, there is uh, some forms of carbon that will conduct electricity, but not in the same fashion. So not in the way that is defined as being uh, a metal. And um, this diagonal, the green diagonal, uh, this was along the original dividing line between metal and non-metal. And now these are the semi-metals or metalloids. Um, so that includes uh, uh, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and acetine. And again, these two down here have not been classified yet as to what uh, category they go into. So we're going to be expected to be able to identify whether elements are metals, non-metals, or semi-metals. So we only have a handful of the semi-metals, that's um, seven semi-metals, everything upper right of that, and including hydrogen on the far upper left are all non-metals and everything lower left of that are the metals. The columns, the vertical columns, have been put together for a particular reason. The reasons show uh, similar chemical properties. So the columns are identified by numbers, and we have a couple of them that also have names. So the newest numbering system is just uh, a simple counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. This is the IUPAC system, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So this is the international system of numbering the columns or groups. Uh, the American system had an AB system. The Europeans had a different a, B system, and the American system is 1A, 2A, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B, 8B, 8B, 8B. So we named three columns 8B, then 1B, 2B, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. And in the American system, you see that the number never goes greater than eight. Uh, and we use Roman numeral for the actual number followed by the A or B designation. The names that we gave them, the, we have several columns that have specific names. So column one, group one, uh, not including hydrogen, but starting with lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. These are the alkali metals. Uh, these are all highly reactive metals. Uh, they will react with air and water quite readily. Uh, so they're all sharing that similar chemical property of being highly reactive. So that's the alkali metals. The blue column, column two, are the alkaline earth metals. These aren't quite as reactive. So the first two, beryllium and magnesium, uh, are not air or water reactive. Starting with calcium, they are calcium, strontium, barium, radium. These are reactive, air or water reactive, but not as reactive as the alkali metals. On the other side of the periodic table, column 18 are the noble gases. They're all gases, and they're gases because they do not react or combine with other elements. So these are inert. Um, and they're called noble gases. But right next to them, column 17, group 17, are the halogens. Uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. And these are highly reactive nonmetals. So they will react with almost anything also. Um, we use chlorine on a regular basis to disinfect drinking water and swimming pools. Um, 
bromine sometimes is used for swimming pools because it doesn't have the same odor as chlorine. Iodine has been used by backpackers to disinfect drinking water. They react with bacteria, organic compounds, uh, and they'll destroy the, kill the bacteria in the process. Fluorine is even more reactive, it's used for a lot of industrial purposes, uh, and it's um, highly reactive. So hydro, hydrogen fluoride will even dissolve glass for us. So those are the named elements. We have our alkaline metals, alkaline earth metals, the halogens, and the noble gases. Uh, we will have questions um, that identify whether we understand groups, but before I do those questions, the other part are the horizontal rows, which are called periods. So we have to be able to distinguish between groups, the columns, and the horizontal rows, the periods. And uh, obviously this is an older image since it's not showing the more recent elements down there. So the periods we have, seven periods, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These two down here are pulled out from this section right here. So in between col column three and column four is where these elements belong. But instead of stretching the table out so far, we pull them out and stick them down on the bottom. So uh, the first bottom row belongs on period six. The, the bottom row here belongs on period seven. So this next image should show that. So by color, showing that there are two rows here. Uh, the first row, the lanthanide series, belongs on period six the actinide series belongs on period seven. So there will be questions on whether elements are metals, non-metals, um, or metalloids, semi-metals. So on uh, the double-sided worksheet, it asks us to classify indium, uh, number 49. And if we can learn this um, diagonal of the semi-metals, then we know that indium is lower left of that diagonal, so that makes that a metal. So indium is a metal. We will ask how many elements are in groups. So on the worksheet, there was a question, how many elements in the group uh, 17? Well, that makes it easy because there's no period 17, so we can't confuse periods and groups. So 17, we're not gonna count these two rows on the bottom, the inner transition elements. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six elements on period 17. Period 18 has the maximum, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and Group one has a maximum of seven. Group two has six. Um, 13 through 17 have the six. Group three through 12 have four elements each. So this does not get counted. These two rows do not get counted as part of any of the above groups. They are in between groups three and four. And we see that with the numbers. It jumps from 57 to 72. And here's 58 through 71. And some periodic tables, the more modern ones, will kind of pull these two down and we'll have an extra column down here. We still have two elements up there, but there's some debate as to which two truly belong up there. Um, questions on how many elements are in a period. Period one has two elements. Period two has two plus six, a total of eight elements. Period three also has eight elements. Period four, we go all the way across and the, based on the counting numbers, it's 18 elements. Period five, all the way across the 18 elements. And that's the number, that's the question that's on the double-sided worksheet. 
period six, well, we go all the way across with 18, but we also include now this row down here, and this 14 down here. So 18 plus 14 gives us a total of 32 elements for period six, and that's the same number for period seven, 32 elements for period seven. So the blocks, the fact table has this shape to it. And um, I'll show uh, some of the reason for the shape um, on the next uh, image. Um, but the names, the um, left two columns and right six columns, these have the most dramatic change of chemical properties. Uh, and they're called the representative elements or main group elements. The middle block here, the blue block, are the transition elements. They're all metals, so it's okay to call them transition metals also. So transition elements for the blue block. And the two rows hanging out on the bottom are the inner transition elements. And again, they're all metals, so if you say inner transition metals, that's okay. The two rows down here get uh, separate names uh, based on the uh, beginning element over here. So the first row is the lanthanides, second row is the actinides. So the lanthanides start with uh, lanthanium, actinides start with uh, actinium. And the debate going on right now is whether those two belong up here or whether the two on the RM, lutetium or Lorentium, actually belong up there. So the more modern power tables tend to leave these blank and have an extra element down here. So this is what we need to know for this part of the chapter. In chapter seven, I believe, we're gonna be coming back and looking at the reason um, the electronic structure in the atom. And the electronic structure has the same structures of blocks, except the main group elements gets broken into two blocks. These are energy sublevels for the electrons. And there are four energy sublevels that we see, and it's going to be, um, we give them letter designation. So the left two columns is S, and that includes helium way over here. The right six columns are P. The middle, the transition elements are D and the inner transition elements are F. But we'll come back to this in chapter seven.